Does pyrolidamide work? Well, here are the results of one Reddit user who claims that they've had significant improvement by using it. Here is a before picture, and here is an after picture. Now, these results were first posted to the Tressless subreddit community, a community that centers around all things hair loss related. The poster has androgenetic alopecia, and it primarily affects his crown area. What is pyrolidamide though? For those of you who don't know, pyrolidamide is a non-steroidal anti-androgen being developed by Kintor Pharmaceuticals in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. Pyrolidamide acts as a selective high affinity silent agonist of the androgen receptor. This means that pyrolidamide binds to the receptor and prevents androgens from coming into contact. In addition, according to clinicaltrials.gov, pyrolidamide has a half-life of 48 hours. Pyrolidamide successfully completed phase 2 clinical trials recently in China and is presently in phase 2 clinical trials in the US for a possible treatment of androgenic alopecia in males. I got the privilege to talk to the user over Reddit direct messages. It was there I was supplied with more details pertaining to the poster's use of pyrolidamide. I was also given some additional photos and video evidence by the poster as they were accused by others on the internet of using hair fibers. Let's start off with the treatments that the poster was using. 1 mg oral finasteride, 5% topical minoxidil, 5% RU58841, and 0.5% pyrolidamide. In my talks with the poster, along with some of their public posts that they made on Reddit, they detailed that they started using finasteride when they first noticed that they were losing hair. About 9 months into their finasteride use, 1 mg oral finasteride daily, they claimed to see no results from baseline. Still, they continued to use finasteride. When they were 5 months into their finasteride use, they started using 5% topical minoxidil as well. So while this poster was taking 1 mg oral finasteride and 5% topical minoxidil a day, they also started using 5% RU58841, an experimental topical antiandrogen. Still, this poster claimed that they did not notice any sort of improved quality of their hair as indicated by our messages that I'm showing here on the screen now. Now, there are some issues here, mostly pertaining to the quality of the compounds. First, RU58841 tends to degrade poorly especially when pre-compounded into a topical solution. If you're not keeping it at a cool temperature, the integrity of the pre-compounded topical solution that one buys may turn into an ineffective product, so you pretty much just wasted your money. RU58841 has a very short half-life at around 1 hour. Regardless, the poster did not notice any improvements with 1 mg oral finasteride plus 5% topical minoxidil plus 5% RU58841. They eventually stopped using RU58841 after one month. So another issue is that the poster started and stopped some drugs very sporadically. With RU, for example, along with being very poor in its chemical composition in the face of degradation, the poster used it quite infrequently, only waiting about one month to discontinue it. Apparently it was causing sheddings, and ideally if a hair loss treatment should work it should cause a shedding phase, but anyway, the poster discontinued it after one month. Minoxidil was just recently introduced into their hair loss stack in about four months into their entire hair loss regimen. Now, to be fair, four months of minoxidil use along with nine months of finasteride use should yield some results if you're an average or super responder to the drugs, however, the poster did not get much improvement from baseline. It was only when 0.5% pyrolidamide topical solution was introduced to their hair loss stack that they made significant improvement. Now, there are others on the internet that boast similar results in a similar short amount of time. Take this post, for example, on Reddit. This is another poster, not the one that I talked to, by the way. Again, this hair loss thing has significant genetic factors, and depending on what ethnic background you have, familial genetics, and epigenetic conditions in response to your environment, your response to specific hair loss treatment drugs is individual and could be what these two users have the genetics for. Maybe pyrolidamide was somehow a great topical solution for them to use to obtain hair growth from dying follicles. The poster I was talking to offered evidence about their hair loss as the main accusation levied against them was that they were using hair fibers. So I instructed them to do the following, a water test on the hair itself with them running their hands through it, a soap test doing the same thing, and some pictures in different lighting. 
Now, another point of skepticism that comes to this particular poster is due to how fast his hair results came about when he added pyrolidamide. However, it's my understanding that they've been on other hair loss treatments. It could be the case that pyrolidamide helped kick some of the follicles into overdrive by completely blocking all androgens on the scalp. In addition to taking 1 mg oral finasteride, the serum DHT levels for this poster are already lowered. I would say that this created a favorable environment for the minoxidil to do its thing and stimulate the hair follicles into growing more hairs. So the Reddit poster I talked to currently uses the following hair loss regimen. 1 mg oral finasteride daily. 0.5% topical pyrolidamide every other day, and 5% topical minoxidil daily. I'll say this. I had some great results when I started 1 mg oral finasteride and 5% topical minoxidil. It worked well and fast. Within 5 months, I was seeing results and I was able to regain ground. Now, this is uncommon, but it is possible for some people. I think the fact that there are so many hair loss approaches right now possibly means that there are different ways to go about saving your scalp. Now again, you should always contact a doctor and or a dermatologist and endocrinologist, not listen to some random guy on YouTube who makes hair loss videos and fitness videos or whatever, whatever like that, right? <laughs> when it comes to using medications and drugs. And yes, this also means the experimental ones themselves, like, I don't know, RU58841, such a scary long name. However, if you happen to be some sort of researcher, some sort of scientist, you know, having test subjects, you know, some, some rats here and there, there are a wealth of scientific studies and chemical compounds that exist in the world of hair loss and regenerative medicine. And I find that to be very exciting. The coming decades should be very interesting in the world of medicine. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.